I'm David Ashford, founder and managing director of Bristol Space Planes. We are a very small company with very big ideas. We plan to revolutionise spaceflight. As you know, spaceflight today is very risky, very expensive. We plan to reduce the cost of sending people to space by a factor of 1,000 within 15 years. Now that really is revolution. It would lead to a new golden age of science and exploration. Visits to space hotels by the general public would become widely affordable. And that could include many of you. The most extraordinary thing is that our designs are based on those considered feasible in the 1960s and which I worked on as part of my first job with Hawker Seeley Aviation. Technical risk is low and development costs are modest. Before you include, before you conclude this is all extremely far-fetched and switch off, I'd like to point out that we've had endorsements at the highest level. Lord Drayson, when he was Minister for Science and Innovation in the previous government, wrote in 2009, the work of Bristol space planes could revolutionise the future of space and maintain the UK's position at the forefront of space technology. We recently carried out a feasibility study that was part funded by the Technology Strategy Board. We asked 14 UK aerospace companies to comment on the final report. 11 of these 14 replied and they all broadly endorsed our strategy. Now, I am the first to admit that even with these endorsements, it still seems far too good to be true. In a nutshell, the reason why it is true is that the solution to the problem of the high cost of access to space was worked out in the 1960s, but has never been implemented, largely because of the politics of the NASA budget. And what would have been a difficult project to develop then would now be straightforward. So, to show that what we are saying is indeed true, we plan to build a small demonstrator. The next step is completing the design, and it is to do that that we are looking for an investment of £150,000. Much of the background to the revolution in spaceflight is described in my recent book, Space Exploration, All That Matters, published by Hodder earlier this year. I'll now say a bit more about the history of spaceflight and then talk about our plans and then our business case. All satellites and people so far have been sent to space on top of throwaway launchers like ballistic missiles. Very expensive, very risky. In the 1960s, there were plans to add wings, tail, cockpit, landing gear, so that the launcher could be flown back, refueled and fly again like an aeroplane. We were going to build aeroplanes that could fly to space, so-called space planes we were going to transform spaceflight. This shows a Bristol Sibley space plane design from the mid-1960s, similar to the one I was working on. I actually remember visiting Bristol at the time to discuss its engines. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to appreciate that an aeroplane like this would be far less expensive to operate than a throwaway vehicle like a missile that can fly only once. At the time, the Americans had an experimental rocket-powered aeroplane called the X-15 that could fly to space and were showing us all how to do it. Many big aircraft companies at the time had the same idea. We thought that space planes were the obvious way ahead and just about feasible with the technology of the time. The amazing thing is that this has never happened. Fully reusable launches have never been built. The big mistake made by NASA, was to build the shuttle as not fully reusable, even though the early designs were indeed true space planes. Here you can see that the only bit that flies back is the orbiter, which carries the crew. This decision has held up low-cost access to space by 30 years and counting. The main obstacle today is no more than, and no less than, mindset. Getting to space now is roughly at the stage where aviation was when the Bristol box kite flew in 1910. Only a few years earlier, the only way to fly was in a balloon. 
Great improvements happened very rapidly after the box kite. The difference between then and now is that progress then was limited by technology. Aeroplanes were right on the cutting edge and now it is limited by mindset, by the fact that the 1960s designs have been largely forgotten or overlooked. US private investors have so far spent more than two billion on quote new space projects but on very different approaches to design. Established major players are locked into the NASA mindset and are showing very little interest in space planes. Only we, Bristol space planes, are following the 1960s design consensus, which is still by far the most competitive. Our business case is very good precisely because it seems too good to be true. All that we have to do is to dent the mindset and show that we do indeed have the most competitive way ahead for, the low, for a low-cost entry into multi-billion pound markets. And when we've done that, the company will be worth a lot of money. We are therefore looking for £150,000 in return for 5% of the equity to complete the design of a demonstrator. This is called Microsonic and it's a sort of home-built space plane. This design work will greatly add to our intellectual property, which at present is mostly know-how. Microsonic leads to our Ascender entry-level two-seat space plane, which can fly to space for two or three minutes, like the X-15 I showed you earlier. Ascender in turn leads the space cab, which is fast enough to stay up like a satellite. It can carry crew to and from space stations and passengers to space hotels. It can provide an airline service to orbit, and it's that, the aviation approach, that's going to transform spaceflight. Each vehicle on this sequence helps to develop the technology for the next and build up the credibility needed to gain the funding. None of our competitors have such a well-planned step-by-step development program. We can achieve a breakthrough in space markets and less, at less cost and risk than any of the competition. Our experience of space plane design stretches back to the 1960s, when most of the creative thinking was done. And that is our unique selling point. So far, we've carried out feasibility studies on all three vehicles and have started bench testing the rocket engine. We have built a large radio control fly model to check out some of the engineering. Altogether, we have spent getting on for half a million pounds. We have an excellent core team. Here is David Kent, our chief designer, one of the world's best light aeroplane designers. Here is David Warby, our chairman, a successful and experienced engineer and manager. Coming to the business case, we recently carried out a study for the UK Space Agency. And this shows that the net present value of future space plane revenues, discounted at 15%, is no less than £40 billion. That is a lot of money, and we have the most competitive strategy for securing a good portion of it. Now, you might well be asking how a sum of £150,000, a lot to you and me, but small beer in the context of space, could secure a significant share of such a large market. The answer is that we plan to move ahead in stages, each, each with its own tranche of funding, each adding greatly to our credibility and to the value of the company. When the penny drops and a critical mass of people come to believe that we do have the best strategy, the value of the company will be more than enough to ensure that early investors make a very good return. The most likely exit is a partnership agreement with a major player. You can find further details in our business plan. Finally, early investors will be offered a discount equal to five times their investment on their first flight to space in one of our space planes. Fares will start at about £100,000 and come down to just a few thousand pounds with maturing technology and economies of scale. So a modest investment now could ensure your flight to space. Now, getting your flight obviously depends on our space planes actually being built. The main risk is simply the failure to gain the investment for development before the competition catches up. The most likely cause of that happening would be investors failing to be convinced soon enough by what we're saying. So by investing now, you will be showing faith in the project 
and thereby helping greatly to reduce the main risk. You will also be helping to achieve low-cost access to space, which will be of great public benefit and of great historical importance.